Hello folks and welcome to our game with myself, Shane Stavis, and as always... Shane, are we definitely friend. live, my friend? We are. Quite look definitely good. are live. We are. There's uh, there's people watching already. I can see it there. Why? Okay. I can't see I can't see it, which is which is peculiar. So I was worrying that our dulcet tones weren't being heard by everyone, but I'm glad that they are. Well, get your, your comments in there, folks. Can you see us? Are we live? Do you know, I'm going to read out a couple of comments. There's so much that happened over the weekend. The Shamrocks through to another county final for certain. KCAT says the village were terrible. Looked more like a junior team. The other semi final is 50 50. Stars are being born in the Premier Boys, says Ian Donovan. And Liam Slattery says the two Darius Stakelman and McCarthy will surely get the call from uh, Cal. So we will talk about that. I'm sure Darrell will certainly get the call from my brother, or more so uh, Brendan Cummins, who's over the under 20s next year. Yeah, are you, you're saying your brother's going to be making the calls. He's in already. He's the head honcho by the sounds of things. And I'd like to think that I could be the puppet master behind all of that. <laughs> be interested to see um, um, your criticism or lack thereof, uh, depending on results. So, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Tip under 20s can do no wrong next year. <laughs> good man, good man. Come here. Some amount of stuff happened over the weekend, and we, like we're going to talk all about the different results in Tipperary, Kilkenny, Galway, Limerick, up and down the country. But to be fair, there was a lovely bit of needle in the Ryder Cup, which in its in itself as a competition was a real damn squib because you know USA never showed up. But it was great to see the bit of crack in the bus afterwards. Yeah, no, just about the needle. I I can always think like. In any rivalry, bitter is always better. Like you need that bit of bitterness. You need that bit of needle. You need, you know, lads going oh, pointing at pointing lads going pointing at other lads in the car park and not condoning uh, you know, what the caddy did or anything like that. But you lads, are. lads, lads, l- lads go the other side of the line. That's like McElroy basically said that it roiled them up. Um, but that's what you want. That's what you want in any competition. Um, and I don't know about you, like, but to me the the Ryder Cup is probably second only, I'd say, to the Masters as regards entertainment for golf. And nearly, it's m- maybe even nearly number one. Um, and the, the crack looked like it was flown uh, on the bus after Shane Lowry. Good to have a little bit of an awful, awfully influence in there. No doubt, the, no doubt the porter and other substances will be flown in there. I saw him drinking out of the cup. Um, yeah, it looked like, looked like great. Old crack kind of got me thinking back to great trips that I was on on a bus myself as part of board teams and things like that. Like, there's literally nothing like it. I mean, yeah, they're, uh, like, McElroy, when would you see McElroy like that normally? You'd never see him like that. And like, I, I think the, the most gas thing about the whole lot is, do you go back, like, 10 years ago, he didn't like the idea of the Ryder Cup. He wasn't on board at all. And now he couldn't be driving it harder. Like, the way he was getting wound up, you can see it means something. And, like, so what if he didn't used to like it? He does now, and, you know, it's great crack. Even if USA were off, they were brutal. Yeah, they were very bad. I think it was. I think those comments went nearly as far back as, like, 2009 or something like that. Probably, yeah. but ve- very, very far back. But, uh, like, when you're playing an individual sport like that and you're, everyone's your competition, it's kind of cool to slip into a team environment. That's why, like, Lowry would have played with teams growing up. He's one of the few that would have played, like, he would have played GA well into his teens. So he loves that type of environment. And, like, he was fist bumping, like, he was Brendan Bugler going around the place. Like, he was absolutely loving it. Hey, surely Lowry would have been a tasty full forward, slinging over pints off left and right. I don't remember him much. I think he played in goals for the Clara Hurlers underage. We beat them in an under 10 community games final, which I said it to him one time when, when I met him. I saw it into him. <laughs> uh, a, rare, a rare victory. I wouldn't be beating him on the golf course anyway. Um, but yeah, like, the crack definitely he's looked like it was flowing. He's, 30, he's 36. I think he's, yeah, he's in around, in around the same age. Um, what sort of, like, I presume you would have had a couple of, kind of good kind of journeys with Kula on the road. You would, I'm sure you've been in kind of cool enough kind of places down to the years, down the country, up the country. I know we had a few right ones at Bar, like there was nothing like it. Everyone, no matter who you were, had to sing, had some sort of song or something like that. I remember my party piece at one stage was um, Mario Rosenstock's version of I Think I Better Leave Right Now, based around Roy Keane, when he had to leave, you know. <laughs> You know, it was yeah, that was my party piece at one stage. But uh, any good memories from the the cooler days that going either up the country or down the country? Well, of course, we should comment on your stag when you were singing My Little Honda 50. <laughs> yeah, 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 so that's the new party ramp, piece. <laughs> we're surrounded by some amount of uh, 
apes. Know, <laughs> yeah, apes. <laughs> well lubricated apes from uh, from Burr, but that was good. All crack. Yeah, I remember um, going like I think it was my second year with Kula, and we were getting a bus down to Owlert, and it was Patrick's day, and a couple of lads showed up a little bit late from the bus for the bus, I should say. Here with the team and he was trying to play it down that he'd been out on the night before and at this stage like Kula were at nothing and Owlert were you know a team that was serially getting to the Leinster Championship so this was a really good test for us and Martin Story was managing the whole lot so he came along trying to play it real cool but didn't realize now he'd been out and he'd been romancing that night beforehand and he had glitter all over his face and he had an Ireland flag you know those little sort of painted <laughs> on little Ireland flags or sort of a press-on tattoo thing on his face. He didn't realise the state he was in when he showed up. Oh, obviously, he was atrocious when he played. But uh, we went down, and then one of the players got an iPad off the, the manager at that stage, and he started messaging a player that... Uh, well, he gave his iPad off to a player, and the player started messaging other lads, saying, hey, where the hell are you? I was up in the cot all night, with one, and, I still, and I still made it here. So I'll always remember that. Look, it was gentle, old crack, bit of mess, and we all know the crack, nothing too serious. Yeah, I know those kind of trips. But there, that's what you talk about in training the next Tuesday night, the Thursday night. And like, I've been smart, you're talking about now, probably a decade later. That's when people meet up. It's remember the time you did this, remember the time whatever happened. And chatting an inter-county player there recently enough, and he just kind of said, and he wasn't condoning drinking, and he only drinks five or six times a year, he said, but he says it's the best form of team bonding. And I, I tend to agree after a match or whatever, it's great to get everybody out together. Um, and it's important when you lose, everyone loses together, has a couple of drinks, and when you win, the same. And you got, when you're on the road like that um, and you're getting buses up and down the country, there's, there's nothing like it and you never forget it. Yeah, I had some great trips. And Joe Butler says, I think you're wrong about Rory, uh, Rory's comments on Ryder Cup. It was about the Olympics. I actually double-checked when I saw your comment there. And when he was 20, he made comics, a com like you're right, he, he wasn't a big fan of the Olympics. And obviously there was the thing about Britain or Ireland, who he played for. But when he was 20, he said about the um, Ryder Cup, it's not that important of an event for me. It's an exhibition at the end of the day. Obviously, I'll try my best for the team, but I'm not going to be running around fist pumping. How things have changed. <laughs> How things have changed. Uh, Coo Collins Blood says, after Dunloy got beat, I thought Dixborough were going to finish the day with another big shock win. But when TJ put that line ball over, I knew deep down that the tide would turn. Valley Hale's toughest games are sometimes in Kilkenny. Yeah, that's true. Like, we have so many um, games there to talk about. Is there anything else you want to talk Do you know what I want to also talk about? Again, like, we've kind of touched on the idea of having VAR in hurling or something similar, video technology. What happened between Spurs and Liverpool on Saturday? I don't know. Did you see this? But anyway, for the viewers... Basically, what happened is Luis Diaz, he was sent clear for a, for a goal attempt. He buried it. The ref, It was called for offside, which was a human error. And this has happened for, you know, however long soccer's been around. It was a human error from a linesman. Went to VAR. VAR thought that they said, it is a goal. Can you check if this is okay? He said, check complete. So basically, the referee was saying, can you confirm that's an offside? But the VAR uh, official thought he meant, can you confirm it's a goal? So he just said, check complete. Because he was like, yeah, yeah, it's obviously a goal. And then as soon as the play restarted, there's no mechanism to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's confusion. And obviously there should be. But, you know, it was very, very costly for Liverpool, who ended up losing the game with an own goal in injury time. So if that sort of apery is happening over in, um, in the Premier League, where it's supposed to be professional, and the officials had been flown out to the Middle East to ref a game a couple of days beforehand, what would happen in GEA? Yeah, what would happen in GA when there's going to be there's definitely going to be less personnel involved as well when you have professionals making a mistake like this? We, we we're struggling to get referees at this rate. Um, so how we're going to get all the technical officials or whatever that need to carry out all these roles and maybe the finances involved as well? I don't know. Um, like, would you say VAR has been a success in soccer? Uh, generally, yes, but. Okay. Joe, you know, it, it felt like it worked so much better in the in the World Cup when I think you no, know, there's this semi-automatic uh, decision maker on um, offsides and stuff like that. I think they just—it's a difficult one because people are saying, "Oh, it's going to remove human doubt," uh, but then there are still subjective decisions within. You know, they bring it up and they're like, "Well, okay, a guy is let's say that much offside, but doesn't that partly depend on when you pause, you know, the play?" 
because like how do you know when a foot has connected with the ball versus when it has then come off the ball again so like it's such like fine little margins it's a difficult one and i know we'd only just end up having more disasters in ga but like well we've already had a couple of disasters with hawkeye like it's generally been fine but there's been a couple of big moments that have been like and it's just such a bad look as well so i don't i don't know decisions um, as in, should they be looking back at red card decisions? Yeah, as in, like, okay, can you think of an obvious harsh red card that happened in GA in the last year? Or so, people, get your comments in and let us know. Like, give us your top of work. Can you think of one whereby, if we had video footage there, that wouldn't have been given as a red card? Like, there's definitely uh, been harsh decisions. The one on probably Ed McCarthy against Tip that was given as a black card and a penalty down when he was closer to the Ennis Road, wasn't he, <laughs> than the, the yeah. goal to be gas now. So, someone will say that Richie Hogan uh, wouldn't have been sent off in the final in 2019, but obviously he would have on video. Uh, but, Andrew has it up already there. Yeah. Michael's footage seems to have dropped on me there for a moment. I'm going to remove him just for a second. But I just wonder, another... Um, one that kind of stood out to me is uh, is the rule where rugby they they had that sort of yellow card whereby you're also put on report. I think this would be quite good at GA. Like if it's a yellow card and you think, okay, this is a yellow card, virgin on red, that you might be like, okay, can we stop and have a quick little look at the video on the sideline because I think it is yellow. Maybe the player gets substituted and for for a couple of minutes, and then if it comes back from whoever's up in bar or whatever that that was a red card decision maybe you can then upgrade it to a red i was just t- talking there there michael while you were um just gone off there for a second that in rugby what i like at the moment is that you can give a yellow card which obviously is a sin bin for 10 minutes and then within that 10 minutes the person in the bunker they obviously always have to have a nonsense on name for it in rugby they decide should that be upgraded to red or not when you sort of do yellow card plus report i don't think that would be too bad in ga but you know within the do you work it within a sim bin rule or what, what way do you do it? But anyway, look, I think that's an interesting one. Yeah, Shano, I think when we can't even get rid of the preliminary honour in quarterfinals, I think we'll be waiting a while for VAR. <laughs> Wasn't that brutal? <laughs> yeah, um, and it was like comprehensively beaten, really, you'd, ha- you'd have to say. So they're here to stay. Like, I don't know when that will come up again now. Do you know what I mean? And there was a couple of roadshows around the country, and I believe there's a couple of counties strong enough against it. But when when that's still in play, um, I'd say we're we're a long way away from VAR and and things like that happening over um in the GA for a good while. I'd say. Yeah, but how much of it is down to horse trading between different counties that are unaffected by these rules? Like, is there a case of look, you vote for this? Let's say some county that's unaffected up in some county that's down at Laurie Maher level and is unaffected, they're canvassed by some county in you know, some other part of the country saying, hey, look, vote, vote to keep this in and we'll vote to keep your thing in. Down, You know, I mean, it'd be frustrating if that's the reason rather than people genuinely feeling this is the right thing for the sport, you know? You just hit, imagine a lot of lads going around saying, vote Quimby, when Mayor Quimby's going around looking for votes. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Tobin says, mindset around technology changes. It's to reduce error and not to eliminate error. Also, it needs to be specific what are, around what it can and can't call. That's fair enough. All teams deserve a go. You can't be isolating them, but you're not. If you're talking about the Joe McCarthy there, SSRI, because like you're saying, what's the reward for winning the Joe McDonough? Yeah, you get promoted so that you could play in, in the Lee McCarthy next year. And also for the Joe McDonough teams, rather than forcing them to play it all off in like six or seven weeks, whatever it is, Give them an extra kind of three or four weeks so that you have don't have a load of counties whose hurling is finished in J- mid June, late June. So I think it actually promotes hurling more by extending that competition. Yeah, I just think it, it's a it's really like outside of Leash beating Dublin in twenty nineteen. It's it's a one off game, maybe that helps promote hurling within the county or promote GA within the county, but it doesn't really get to the root of what will make these teams more competitive in the long term. Really, yeah. being honest with you. Just the last thing I wanted to say on the. On the Ryder Cup, I see Graham McDowell talking about, um, you know, how maybe they need to go to neutral venues and that will offset America winning when it's in America and Europe winning when it's in Europe. And it just got me thinking, like, what are the what are the places that you hated going to most as a player? What are the venues where you thought there's certain places where you'd never mind going? Like, I, I was thinking about it beforehand. We obviously played a lot of games in Brendan's Park um, growing up. I don't think I ever lost uh, an awfully senior hurling championship game in Brendan's Park, which is mad. 
but we had a thing about going to O'Connor Park for a while. Um, Parnell Park was always something you dread and you're thinking you're four or five points down before you start. When we were in college, um, going over to LIT, when LIT were in their pomp and Davey was over them and Canning and that, etc. And it was real kind of hostile. That was a real difficult place to go. Is there anywhere you can think, maybe in Dublin or even within Tip, that was... You wouldn't pretty, maybe you'd enjoy the, the contest and what everything that comes with it, but you're thinking this is going to be a very difficult place to win. Well, interesting, interestingly enough, here, Red Lad says the bogeys in Cabra. So that would be Saint, I think it's, sorry, Pope John Paul II uh, ground, which is Saint Finbar's in Dublin. So, you know, there's a lot of lads now who'd be, it'd be squeaky bum time. They might need a second pair of underpants heading out there because. Would you learn every, a hell of a lot about, about a lad out there? I'll put it to you. Oh, you would, yeah. Yeah. Because you That's know you're perfect. going to be tested. And yeah. those lads in St. Finbars are well able to hurl. And over, like I know they haven't probably had the results they've wanted in the last couple of years, but they won a Division Two, a Senior Two title there just three years ago. I know because I was on the wrong end of it in the final that day. Uh, they've good hurlers. But by God, there's been a couple of brawls out there over the years. I should know because I started one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, last one as well, the guards. When the guards used to play in the Fitzgibbon, I don't think they play in the Fitzgibbon now, to the best of my knowledge, but they used to find like the smallest regulation pitch. This happened several times. The smallest, usually a regulation pitch in Munster, somewhere down in Watford. And they were all generally, back in the day before the height restrictions were lifted, they were all generally real big brutes of lads. I'm thinking of like six foot four uh, guys that would, you know, beat you up and down for 50 minutes. So they'd bring you down to this tiny pitch and they'd murder you for 50 minutes. And then it was a case of who was the better team in the last 10 minutes. And a lot of the time, um, I'm sure I don't know if they were, I'm sure they weren't displaying badges or anything like that. But it's a good thing to have as a threat if you're a guard, actually, isn't it? I tell you yeah. something, you put, you put this free over, I am nicking you after. Would you, would you be not, not more concerned, though, about playing on a field that's really wide open? Like, I'm happy enough with the smaller pitch. I want the physical game. I don't want the nippy lad to have space. So I'd be more afraid of going into a big wide open area. Yeah, but the college teams, you have to remember, between the ages of 19 and 23, maybe 18 and 23, and they're nippy fast lads generally. College, it's all about speed, whereas the guards, and obviously there's not, um, there wouldn't be a restriction on age as much there. But by all accounts, from, from hearing from lads that played down there through the years, they'd batter you for 50 minutes and then it would be up in the air who would win the last 10. Yeah, Bernard McLaughlin says, worst place in Ireland, Salt Hill in Galway. There's got to be a few pitches in the likes of Donegal as well, where the, the elements are coming in and there's no hiding from it throughout the game. Like, we've seen a load of games in, is it McCool Park or Bally Buffet over the years where, oh my God, it just looks horrendous to play there. Yeah, I saw a game, oh, Ratmore were playing somewhere in Kerry yesterday, and it was basically, um, I don't know if it was a lake right beside it or a river flowing right beside it, but you're just thinking, like, if it's not a nice day here, you're, you're in big bother, big, big yeah. bother. You, Paddy, says, Caseman Park had to jog up through the subs to go into the dressing rooms, almost encouraged a scrap at half time. And obviously, Hugh Paddy there is a Carlo man. I actually love uh, Dr. Cullen Park in Carlo just because, not necessarily because of the standard of pitch or anything like that, but just that tunnel that goes mm -hmm. down underneath sort of the entrance towards the pitch. So you're actually going underground. It feels like you're in World War II, then coming up the steps out into the pitch. It's cool. Great picture of um, Sean O'Brien coming out the tunnel over the weekend before playing for the Fighting Cocks. They were beaten by a point in the Carlo Junior football final. But like you just see this brute of a fella coming down the tunnel. I don't know if you ever told the story as well, but about 25 years ago in Westmead, um, and I won't name any clubs or any names, but 25, 30 years ago, there was a team going for two or three in a row and there a lot of old heads, real experienced heads, and uh, there used to be a tunnel in uh, there used to be a tunnel in Mullingar in Cusick Park before they did it up, uh, like a proper tunnel, like as in you disappear into it or whatever. But they were under pressure against young up and coming team just coming up to the break. And one of the elder statesmen says to his brother, "Take off your jersey going down the tunnel." And uh, the brother obviously knew what he was on about because maybe this had happened before. But three or four of the experienced team jogged into the tunnel first, turned the jerseys inside out, and swung and just swung at everything that came in the next 90 seconds to two minutes. Everyone dispersed into the dressing room. Nobody knew what had happened. Nobody knew numbers, anything like that. The experienced team who were under pressure coming in at halftime blew away the younger team coming out after halftime because I'd say a few of them were 
afraid to even go into a confrontation in the second half because they knew what might happen. Well, this is the thing. You always need a few older experienced heads to, to be out there to guide and I suppose make the younger lads feel like they're being protected because it can be a bit of a daunting thing coming in as a young lad against the senior team. Like there, um, one time with the UCD freshers, there was a bit of a mix-up and a team came out for a challenge match and they were a senior team. Sorry, they were an adult team. They weren't playing at the top level. Now, nothing untoward happened at all, but you'd be sort of afraid of, you know, because these are young lads, 17, 18, 19, and they can solo through at speed. And then maybe an older experienced lad might be like, I'm not having this and lower the blade. You know, that bad things can happen. Um, uh, you know, most of the time it's fine, but, you know, there is scope for bad things to happen there. So it's always good to have an all older head among them. Oh, you, you need a few older heads. And at the end of the day, when a row starts, it's usually the older heads that are coming in, sorting things out. Very funny, actually. Burr played Crinkle back in the day, and I'm going to say it was Intermediate Championship. And Crinkle had an old stager playing full forward, a uh, fellow by the name of Brendan Kendi, originally from Noxigauna. And he was marking a young fella full back, like half his age, maybe even like he could have been 20 years younger than him. And they were just hurling against each other. And he, was, he wasn't trying to cleave him or anything like that. It was kind of clean fun. And then uh, Joey O'Loughlin, an elder statesman, went, went in full back. And within five seconds, the two old fellas just collided like that. It's like, it was like it was an unwritten rule between the two of them. I'm not going to scalp a young fella. But if an old fella or an experienced lad comes in here, we're just going to draw on each other for half an hour. Yeah. Okay, I'll get, get through some of the other comments here. Emily 89 said, should have gave the option of just the winners going through to preliminary quarterfinals. This is the Joe McDonough. And get rid of the runners-up going through. Nearly all the heavy, heavy beatings have been the runners-up. Lads, you're assuming that the option, the opinions that you represent are reflective of the majority opinion or a preliminary quarterfinal. Quite possibly, they're not. Fair point. Um, this is about VAR from Adrian McGrath. It's not possible in GA. How could you have the quality of equipment needed for that? And VAR still makes an SH1T of things. Uh, Thurless, the graveyard of Galway hurling teams, could have been playing a Joe Mack team there and still find a way to lose. Clare and Croke Park Bar 2013 uh, over the last 25 years. They did draw an All-Ireland semi-final against Galway in 2018. Played pretty well after a disastrous opening few uh, minutes. 